Then I began to call my husband's phone. He wasn't picking. He was already terrified of me. But then I sent him a long voice note on WhatsApp. He said, baby, you're not going to My name is Tegum. Just allow me to come back. I'll be taking my medicine. I promise. And then he said to me, that's just the point I wanted you to get. Because what is happening to you has happened to many people. It's happening to many people. So you don't let it ruin you. Just recently, there's the popular IVD story. If anybody followed it. Bimbo is late now. But I recognize myself a lot in Bimbo who is dead. All that aggression and violence and endless nagging. It's a mental imbalance. Ooh, you're not a bamba like that. You can't be so crazy. You pull kerosene or fuel around about your house and then you put it on fire and expect it not to burn. It will burn, but it will burn you too. I have this injury to show for all the times that I smashed, I smashed floor ties, was breaking windows so I could jump out. Church, I was go. <laughs> I'm just trying to say that so many people are, are here listening to me and they're just like me. Some of them know about it. Some don't know. So I'm bringing you the same gospel that Jesus brought to the people. Consciousness. Awareness. Knowingness. What you don't know is your mountain. From the moment I realized that bipolar uh, makes me unstable in my moods and in my dealings with people, I began to make conscious efforts to be a better person. I started to take my pills, which some people that are mentally unstable should take. Now, the pills repair brain cells. Because my brain, for 33 years, faced a lot of damage. Imagine being sick and not taking drugs. You only get worse. If you have anger issues, the kind that never goes away until you take out your anger or vexation on something or someone, my dear, you have a mental problem. If you feel so bitter and saddened, so much so that you inflict injury on self, you have mental illness if you have delusions, hallucinations, if you're out of touch with reality, euphoria, you have mental illness. And mental illness can be inherited. Some of us are born with it. Some of us are acquired it through trauma, poverty, and living a stressful life. Many women are unmarried today because it's a mental illness. Because there's no break in your brain cells. It just keeps flowing. You can't even put a stop button to it. The brain never shuts down. <laughs> Daddy, let me end by saying that my people and I, backed by a team of medical experts, will be offering free medical diagnosis for as many as there are that suspect that there's a form of imbalance going on here. And when you're diagnosed, we have free medication for as many as there are that need it. It's the least I can do for humanity. Please do not let the shame and stigma of being attached to mental illness make you shy away. You'll be doing yourself a great disservice if you do that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Praise, praise God. Now, now, can you, can you, can you stretch forth your hands towards her and pray? Brains are creatures of God. Nobody can do more repair in the brain than the one who created the brain. Father, thank you. Jeremiah said, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best of the land. Your daughter is willing. She has yielded. Let the healing come, Lord. The one that is called perfect. Today, oh Lord, she's been inaugurated as an apostle into this particular mission to deliver women, to deliver men who are in this ailment, give her a voice. 
give her the fund, give her the support to propagate this particular gospel. That at the end of the day, oh God, through her, many families will be healed. Relationships will be healed. Children will be saved. Father, we thank you. To her support team, oh God, give them support like never before. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. Again, let's celebrate this great woman. Celebrate this great gift. Celebrate this great gift. And celebrate her team also. Praise God. I am glad, and this is basically why I wanted her to come up to the pulpit. He, she didn't ask me. I told her, this thing you're telling me, I need you to speak to the church. Because I knew when all the episodes were happening, especially the ones that went on social media, she said that one of the things that happened to people in that environment is that social media is their best friend. Once you see in the family, the person goes on social media. So when you see yourself fighting your partner on social media, it's a sign. She's offering free diagnosis and free treatment. That is heavy. And another person I want to appreciate is that man sitting beside her. That's, that's greatness. That's greatness. Not too many men, not too many men will accommodate it. Not too many men. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God is a perfect matchmaker. Can you imagine him being your brother? And you hear that the wife is saying that he wants to use her, your brother wants to use her for it, and you know it's not true. Come on from there, marry another woman. What kind of that? You, you, all manner. Let me tell you, he also heard all this. But he decided to stand with the wife. Again, one of the reasons why I wanted her to come up here again is because some of you, when you saw her on social media, write all those things. You believed it. I keep telling you people, be careful of these people that write on social media. Be careful. Especially when they are celebrity. Pastor Kisley was here telling us how celebrities will write that men are scum. Marriage is scam. And they come behind to hear pastor be praying for us and believing God for marriage. <laughs> and you have deceived a lot of people. And they are making a mess of their marriage. Be careful what you see on social media. All that glitters. Oh, paint. Nedalo, God bless you. God bless you, sir. Thank you. I won't waste time because our time is far gone. But you see this word, you will hear it like never before today. He's not, he's not a speaker that cannot speak for long. He's also not a speaker that time can choke. Anything he says per time is parked. So I need to recognize, first of all, the wife who agreed to come with him this time around. You can't be clapping like that if you have been benefiting from this ministry. Reverend Mrs. CNC Onyeledo. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, the worst person to preach before is your wife. You can preach outside your wife. You'll be shouting. Once your wife walks in, because you know at home you are not a preacher, <laughs> you're a fighter. Mr. Billy, God bless you. That's the PA to Bishop. God bless you. I, I love this, your outfit. When you are leaving, just say amen. Bless my ministry with it. 
And then my friend and brother, Honorable Ifanyago. God bless you. Good to have you in church today. Okay, if you are ready, media, let's hit it. Let's hit the ground rolling. Josephine Onyeredo is a renowned teacher of the Word of God with over two decades of effective pastoral ministry that spanned through a range of Christian ministries, including Gospel Youth Ministries International and the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. He studied theology at Evangel Theological Seminary, Joss. Bishop C.N.C. Onyeledo is presently the General Overseer of House of Generous International Church and the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria President in Ugu State. He is married to Ijoma and they are blessed with four children. House on the Rock, make welcome Bishop C.N.C. Onyeledo. lifted up oh lord we love you we worship you you deserve it glory befits your name guide us into the knowledge of truth that liberates in jesus mighty name we have prayed praise the lord uh, before i get into the message i I want to appreciate the boldness of our sister. I have had two parents. I know what she's describing. My father, an 80-year-old man, tore down our house. And nobody could deal with him. I, I came down to Oware. I looked at him. We were speaking grammar. I knew better. I called some young men. We bundled him into the car. I was driving. I put one behind. I put two people. He put him in the center. One on the left. One on the right. And one on my side. And he was telling the police we were kidnappers and armed robbers. And I kept on flying. Straight to psychiatric hospital in Ugo. 82 year old man. When I dropped him, he took off. All the young men could not catch him. He was literally flying. And he's passed. But he got well under two weeks. And I don't forget, my wife said... You know, we, we don't believe these things can be handled by drugs. My mom has visual hallucination. Every day, they packed a bus loaded with a heavily bodied man wanting to kill, him, kill her. Simple. 10 milligrams of olanzaprine. That was all. 